Hi everybody, Dina Litwin here again, and welcome back to Tuesday Tips for Leaders of Volunteers. This week, talking to the rookies out there, you're brand new to leading volunteer programs, you got thrown into the position from another department, or you're at the beginning of your career, maybe you're fresh out of school or fresh out of AmeriCorps or both, uh, or you're further in your career and you've not liked what you've been doing so far and you want to work in nonprofits, and this seems like a good way to do that by working with volunteers and running volunteer programs. But, here's the big but, you get there and total chaos or you're trying to start a program from scratch from the ground up or you're thrown into a situation of incredible confusion and dysfunction and you're starting to feel overwhelmed of the pressure to try to as we put it uh, in the business build the car and drive the car at the same time and this can be terrifying. It just happens that throughout my career, I've been in that position a lot where I've come into an agency and ended up completely redoing or, or creating volunteer engagement strategies and programs and policies from the ground up. So I've broken this down because it's a short Tuesday tip. There's going to be lots more resources with links below and in the cards above. But one of the best things you can do is start with inventory and needs assessment and surveys. That is exactly what it sounds like. Who have you got? What have you got? How is everything working? What isn't working? And what's missing that needs to be really, really urgently created or resourced somehow? And that can be in the kind of collateral abstract sense of you need to have a volunteer handbook and a program manual, but you've got to write all the policies yourself because no one's really written anything down before, uh, all the way to, hey, there's volunteers coming in on the work site in the agency office or organizational office, and they don't have a place to sit and they don't have a functioning computer and they're having to use their own stuff and that's not really good clean IT security or, or hygiene to do it that way. So once you do a needs assessment, and I, and I talked about it in that previous card, but um, this card on volunteer satisfaction index and volunteer surveys with my good friend and colleague, Rosanna Galindo, this is also a good thing to look into. Um, and I'll put more kind of links and templates to needs assessment and surveys in the description below. But if you can gather the information then that helps you decide what's going to be your timeline of success, certain milestones or goalposts that you or other members of the team are accountable for, and what are the realistic or desired outcomes and outputs from doing this program design, doing strategic volunteer engagement from the ground up. So once you've gathered the needs assessment, you've done evaluations, what kind of technology are you using, is there a, a record keeping system that's just bankers boxes full of random papers with no even alphabetical order, are there excel sheets, is there a really nice robust CRM database that's either a donor database that already has volunteer management software module built into it or do you have separate platform technology for volunteer management software and systems. So kind of getting the lay of the land and figuring out your situation and your inventory is priority number one. The next big thing, the next big step um, is to from those answers and the outcomes that you want to achieve set again, very realistic timelines and then communicate that uh, throughout the agency, not just your immediate supervisor, but other departments of, hey, this could take three months to get to this step. Uh, it might take six months to get to the next step. And let me tell you from all of my decades of doing this, you probably won't see significant changes getting into regular habits and, and success from that until about a year after making major changes to the volunteer program and how you're engaging the community of volunteers or donors and all of your supporters. So be realistic about the timeline. The third thing to do is of the must haves or the agency work will fall apart unless we fix this part in the volunteer services department, make a list of priorities 
of things that you might have to go to a budget amendment or next year's budget to get, or hopefully you can just say, this is so urgent that uh, we need to invest in this technology or we need to get um, this other part-time person on board because I've realized this is more than 40 or 50 or 60 hours a week for one person's position. So use the data you have to tell the story of how you can be successful and also that helps you build a case for getting the resources that you really, really need uh, in starting off in this position. There may be things that as you're kind of prioritizing what resources or policies or practices need to be in place next, that you realize that's something that I might have to ask for in next year's budget. So if you can prioritize of the desired outcomes or the results that you wanna get right away, what's absolutely urgent and crucial to day-to-day -to -day functioning, maybe needing to have a background check for people working with kids and families, things like that. So kind of do a risk assessment and evaluation of priorities, list them out, then have the list of what would be great and nice to have but isn't quite as urgent or critical right now that can help you work more efficiently, that can help everyone on the team, paid or unpaid, understand volunteer services. So it could be that six months from now, uh, you schedule an in-service communication training to all staff, or you make a video to do e-learning for volunteers or employees to understand some of the basics of the volunteer program as it's being created. And the last piece that you wanna put in place, which is really the end of the beginning, but the, the final piece is to make sure that the next person in this position has an easier time than you did. So that's documenting everything. Ideally, part of this process is creating a volunteer handbook and or an internal program manual that really lays out how you've come up with these policies, how they work, uh, what accountability looks like on your team or for volunteers or throughout the agency so that the difficult job that you had driving the car and building the car at the same time doesn't have to be the situation for the next person in this position. And this uh, kind of documentation can also be really, really helpful to teaching, again, the rest of the team and especially managing up to leadership how important it is for the agency, for the organization to resource and prioritize and invest in strategic volunteer engagement. As you're kind of in the middle of the process of creating this, you can also set up a, a little equation I'm going to share here and, and in this video about return on investment in volunteer services so that, again, if you have to make the case to leadership uh, anywhere along the way to get budget items and get things funded or, or bought or resourced in whatever way you can, that you have the data to tell the story of why this is so important. I'm also going to link to research by the Initiative for Strategic Volunteer Engagement on how to have conversations with both organizational leaders, maybe your executive leaders, and funders, since many leaders of volunteers often share responsibilities or work very closely with the development department or fundraising department, and certainly volunteers are a great source of overlapping. They're very often also funding uh, and being donors to the organization where they work, where they're having a, a good meaningful experience. So all of this uh, really needs a holistic eye view. Give yourself time to pause. I know there's a lot of pressure to just dive in, but don't dive in and just get into a pattern of the dysfunctional systems of the way the agency's always done it. If you're really brought on board to change or create something from scratch, be intentional, be strategic, uh, resource yourself with your professional networks like Alive or VMPC or AVM, uh, your local directors of volunteers um, in agencies, local Dovias, but there's a lot of things and resources and templates and wisdom out in your peer network. You should never feel like you have to absolutely reinvent the wheel. The point of this is not to reinvent the wheel, but to realize 
what gears and wheels we have already and what other missing parts do we need to pull in and i can guarantee you that not just from the resources i'm linking but when you reach into professional networks like alive you can really find templates and manuals and examples and case studies for almost any kind of policy or practice that you want to put in place in your program. So I hope you enjoyed these Tuesday tips. If you're a rookie, hang in there. If you're new to this, welcome to the profession. And we're all in this together. There's a lot of wisdom in our room and in our sector. So thank you for watching this video. Share it with someone you think will enjoy and benefit from this knowledge as well. And we'll see you next week with more Tuesday tips. Take care.